factor and formula writing. So the first type of uh, molecules we deal with are what most people refer to as compounds as which are called molecules. Molecules are composed of two nonmetals. To name a molecule with a formula of N2H4, we first use the nonmetal name of the first one and the name of the nonmetal of the second one with an ID ending. The only difference between the salts you just worked with and these are you have to use what are called prefixes. Anytime you're dealing with only nonmetals, these are called binary covalent molecules because binary means there are two types of elements in it, just two types. So the first one here, you've got N2H4. The N stands for nitrogen, so that's our first part of the name. Then we have to look down below at the prefixes. I've given you the prefixes up to number uh, 10, I believe. Uh, one through five are the ones you usually have to remember and that are a little difficult to remember. So if you look down here, if a subscript is a two, what prefix goes with that? Di. So that means it would be di-nitrogen. And that's the format for the first part. The hydrogen, how many hydrogens are there? Four hydrogens. So we go down to four, and four is a unique one for chemistry called tetra. Okay. Sounds like tetris, but it's really tetra. This prefix is probably the number one new prefix for people that have never taken chemistry before. It's called tetra. Tetra means there's four. So one is mono, two is di, three is tri. They seem to make sense. Triathlon. Diatomic means there's two atoms. Mono means there's one thing. Tetra means four, and penta means five. Once we get past penta, the prefixes are similar to in other um, math classes, uh, other numerical prefixes. Six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, like the octopus, nine is nana, and 10 is deca. And we could keep going, 11, 12, and so on. However, one through five are the ones we will most often be using with covalent molecules. So dinitrogen, and we know four is what prefix? Tetra. So we put tetra, and then we write out hydrogen. The thing about hydrogen is we have to end it with an IDE because it is the second nonmetal written in the formula. So it's called tetrahydride. And the reason it's hydride instead of hydrogenide is just because it sounds better and it's easier to say. And that's the way it's named. The next one, we've got C and O2. What element is C? Carbon. Carbon. Now, since there's one carbon, you could write, you could write mono in there. You could write mono in there for monocarbon. However, most of the time chemists don't include that because it's like including a one in a formula. It's not, in, not needed at the first element. However, the second one, oxygen here, has how many oxygens? Two, so it would be carbon dioxide. And that's where the name carbon dioxide comes from. There's two oxygens and you change the oxygen to an oxide. And since there's two, it's dioxide. Let's look at another example. What if you had <coughs> C and O? Okay. So in this one, you know the C is carbon, just like in the previous one. But the O has a unique prefix in front of it because there's only how many O's? One. So it's called carbon monoxide. You may have heard of that as well. Carbon monoxide is a clear colorless odorless gas uh, that replaces the oxygen in your bloodstream and can poison you. Lots of something that can come out of tailpipes. A plate will be in a tailpipe. Carbon monoxide, if there is a, if it's not burning correctly, you can have carbon monoxide. Yes? So do you always have to put the 
If it's the second one, yes. Okay. If it's the first one, you don't. It wouldn't be wrong if I said it was monocarbon dioxide, but chemists usually don't. It's the preference of them not to include it. The second one, it has to be included there. So if you had nitrogen dioxide versus nitrogen monoxide, they, that's how you know they're different. It's based on the amount. So these are the first type of compounds. These are called binary covalent molecules. And these are only non-metals. Now, the second type of compounds we're going to look at naming. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, dinitrogen pentoxide is the next one we're looking at. So if you have dinitrogen, how many nitrogens are there? Two. Two. And then pentoxide would be five oxygens. So N2O5 is its chemical formula for dinitrogen pentoxide. <clears throat> and you'll notice it's not called pent it's not called pento pentaoxide. The A is removed and the O is included here with the oxide. So sometimes you gotta look for that. If it sounds a little bit strange, it might have to be combined like that, but that is for oxides. Now let's look at this next type of compound. Uh, the next type of compounds are what are commonly referred to as salts. We have worked with these a little bit in the game we just played. To name a salt, you take the cation name, which is usually the thing written first, and the anion name, we add an IUE to the end. So the first one, Na, is what element? Sodium. And then Cl is what element? Chlorine, and it changes to chloride. So that's where we get sodium chloride from, or table salt. Okay. Let's try the next one, LIBR. Please write down what its formula would be. I mean, what its name would be, sorry, from its formula. Please raise your hand if you can tell me what LIBR is called. Yes, sir? Lithium bromide. That is correct. Lithium bromide. Okay. So these are what are called binary ionic compounds because they have two different types of elements. The next one, calcium chloride, is also binary. It has calcium and it has chlorine. However, its formula looks a little bit different. To name this compound, CaCl2, we start with the calcium, and the second element in it is the chlorine it changes into chloride. Now this is the name for calcium chloride and the formula for calcium chloride has to be CaCl2. The next question is why isn't it dichloride? Why is there no di? So it's a silent di? Why is it? The rule is for covalent molecules you use prefixes. For ionic compounds, you do not use prefixes. Do not, do not use prefixes. Now, why is there a two here, though? There's got to be two chlorides. Why does there have to be two chlorides per one calcium? Yep. To make it neutral. The calcium has a plus two charge. The chlorine has a minus one. Just like we did in our game, this would be a compound made of three carbs. So the sodium is plus one, the chlorine is minus one. That's why it's sodium chloride. For salts, calcium, you've got one calcium and two chlorines have to combine together. You can't just combine one calcium and one chlorine because it wouldn't be neutral. So instead of having the formula CaCl, it has to be CaCl2, calcium chloride. So anytime you hear the name calcium chloride, it has to be CaCl2 for it to be neutral. So let's try the next one, calcium oxide. Please raise your hand if you can tell me the symbol for calcium.
Now, if you don't know the symbol for calcium, you want to take out your periodic table and your ion sheet. That will help you out. Pa is calcium, and then oxygen. I mean oxide. Sorry. O. Oh. And what is the charge on oxygen? Negative two. Negative two, because it's in group six on the periodic table, right? Wants to gain two electrons. Why is the charge plus two on calcium? Second group. It wants to lose how many electrons? Two. two. Now, if calcium is plus two and oxygen is minus two, do they neutralize each other? Yep. Yep. So the formula is just, whoop, CaO 